Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming out on this wonderful, wonderful day uh, to the Puppet Christmas 2018 presentation. And now, for your enjoyment, Up With Puppets presents A Very Puppet Christmas Carol. It was Christmas time in Ames, Iowa. The weather was cold and snowy. The Scrooge sisters were making their way through the streets, trying to avoid any merriment or celebration. You see, the sisters would just as soon skip the gift-giving, carol singing, bell ringing, tree trimming experience. They felt it was... A bunch of nonsense. That's what it is. Bah humbug. Bah humbug is right. Why all the fuss? You did all the same stuff last year. Same carols, same decorations, same ugly Christmas sweater. I really don't understand it. The Scrooges had no holiday traditions, no family gatherings, nothing to look forward to. To them, it was all a hassle that interrupted their lives year after year after year. Try as they might, they could not ignore the group of carolers who showed up on their doorstep, bringing joyful singing to anyone who would listen. Everyone in town knew the Scrooge sisters' disdain for all things jolly. This did not stop the carolers from trying, so on this particular December evening, they stood on the Scrooge's doorstep and sang through the door, which had just been slammed in their faces. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a portrait in a pear tree. On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. On the fourth day of Christmas, the third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me five golden rings, four calling birds, great friends, two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. On the ninth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me Christmas, my true love gave to me you better not shout, you better not cry, you better not hit a pear tree. On the ninth, oh, on the eighth, oh, on the seventh, day of Christmas, the clouds are falling. Here we come, the whistling among the lanes of five golden rings. Four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves. From the boar's head in hand, there I be decked with bays and partridge in a pear tree. On the eleventh day of Christmas, my true love came to me. Eleven pipers piping, ten lords a leaping, nine ladies dancing, go, maids and milking, seven swans are swimming, six kids a lame, five golden rings, four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and Rudolph the red nosed reindeer. On the twelfth day of Christmas, my I true love came to me. Dreidel, I made it out of clay, and when he's dry and ready, a dreidel I shall play. Oh, dreidel, dreidel. Sorry. <laughs> On the twelfth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Do, 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 do. On the twelfth day, my true love gave to me twelve drummers drumming like Olympus upon the Serengeti. Eleven pipers piping, ten lords leaping. Whew. 
Boy, 12, the Bah Humbugs were flying after that one. 12 days of Christmas? The Scrooges could barely handle one. They just didn't understand why the children needed time off from school, why working adults would stay home and give up their vacation days, and why would anyone want to go out shopping for Christmas gifts for other people? The Scrooges were misers. They had money, but they didn't like to spend too much on any one thing or any one person. Merry Christmas, Aunt Scrooges. Bye. Humbug. Aunties, the church is making some donations for families who do not have a lot. Do you have any food, blankets, maybe an old coat we could, you could donate? I haven't time for all this. What rubbish. Let them take care of themselves. But it's Christmas. Christmas? Bah humbug. That night, as the Scrooges zoned out to their TV, they saw a commercial that caught their attention. Scrooge the Thirds. Scrooge the Thirds. Scrooge the Thirds. It's me, your friend Como. I mean, Jacob Marley. I'm speaking to you from the great beyond, Minnesota. Listen to me. You, you listen? Okay. Tonight, you'll be visited by three spirits. Heed their warning. Change your ways. Or else, woo! Now, the Scrooge sisters had not always been so, well, Scroogeish. They grew up in the Methodist church here in Ames where traditions abound. Three Christmas Eve services, choir katata, children's program. Why, the sisters had even lit the candles on the advent wreath with their grandparents one year. Growing up in the church, they knew all about Jesus' birth in Bethlehem, but over the years, they had forgotten the joys of Christmas. Until, that is, they were visited by the first of the three Fraggles. Did you hear something? If it's those carolers again, don't answer the door. I've had enough fa-la-la-la for the night. It's me, the Fraggle of Christmas past, and I'm here to remind you of the tra 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 traditions and spirit of Christmas, like you knew when you were little. Don't you remember? Your, grandmother, your grandma's turkey dinner, the extra little gift your grandfather always found under the tree for you? Bah, too extravagant, needless, frivolous gestures. All I remember about church is the Lord's Prayer. Interesting, okay, well we could start with that. Not exactly the memory I was planning, but it might just help. Come on, I have something to show you. Having planned a vision of Sunday school children singing friendly beasts in costume, the Fraggle of Christmas past had a bit of finagling to do, but the value of following through with any fragment of the Scrooge sisters' memory was important. It might just be the thing that helps them connect to God's love, the Lord's Prayer, the cornerstone of a Christian faith, a perfect way to bring faith back to the forefront of their minds. But then the usual debate, which version? Do you go with the traditional congregational reading? The 1970s version by the singing nun and her tambourine? Johnny Mathis's 1986 version? Marvin Gaye? John Denver's sign language version? So many options. Then the answer came. Hillsong worship, dowel rods, reverence, no tambourines. Father in heaven, Father in heaven, holy is your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven.
The final phrase hung in the air as the beauty of the moment lingered in the hearts of everyone present. Although they had said the words a thousand times, the phrase, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, amen, sent a special surge into the hearts of the Scrooge sisters that time. They both paused and pondered the moment, simultaneously annoyed at the interruption to the evening, but enveloped in the memory and spirit that surrounded them. It was as if their grandparents were there, sharing the moment. The sisters were transported to another time, another place. The fraggle of Christmas past let them have the moment and waited until they were ready before offering a bit of advice. A small thing it is to repeat the same prayer all the time, but as it says in Matthew 6, 8, your father knows what you need before you ask him. This, then, is how Jesus taught us to pray. That was beautiful. Leave us, Fraggle. Show us no more. Leave the past in the past. I will leave you now, but soon you'll be visited by another. Me, the Fraggle of Christmas present. Hey, great timing. They're all yours. Who did you say you were again? Another Fraggle. The Fraggle of Christmas present, to be exact. Present? As in now? 2018? Exactly. I'm here to show you what you're missing by shutting out Christmas. We know what we are missing. Crowded shopping malls, credit card bills, tangled tree lights, and 24 hours of Christmas story playing on TV. Hey, I like that one. <laughs> you know it by heart. You're missing eating donuts with the friends that gather at church, celebrating the Advent season, hearing the Christmas story. Heard it. Yeah, been there. Heard that. <laughs> Your friends miss you. They are gathering now. Come, let us adore him. What did he say? He wants us to go with him. Why didn't he just say that? Fraggles, who can figure them out? And so the Fraggle of Christmas present took them to where the congregation was gathering for the start of Sunday service. The sisters smiled as they saw their old friends entering. They reminisced about the old rickety elevator and steep narrow stairs that used to be there, marveling at the updates and addition, additions that had happened since. Of course, they questioned the sensibility of spending that kind of money, but had to admit that the warm, welcoming atmosphere and added room had probably been worth it. They took their seats in the balcony, away from the crowd and out of sight of the pastors. A few chuckles could be heard as they reminisced about the pranks they pulled in the pew as their mother watched from the choir loft, sending looks of warning and nods of approval as needed.
there, too, that they saw their nephew, Tiny Tim, getting ready for his puppet performance. They noticed he looked a little tired and seemed rather stressed. They overheard him talking to the pastor. I'm sorry, I didn't get many donations. I don't know, I think people are just too busy, or maybe too focused on themselves. It's okay, Tim. I'm so proud of you for trying. Just remember, it's up to all of us together to do God's will. You did your part. Thank you. I just wanted to do more. I see kids at school freezing because their coats are too thin. And then I think about the people who don't have enough to eat. Our church is doing good things to help those people. And other churches are too. This is a season of giving, but we'll be doing other things throughout the year. So have faith and don't worry. Good things are happening everywhere. Okay, thanks. I'm planning on doing more later in the year. Mom said I'm almost big enough to go to ASP. That'll be a great way to help people. What a guy. If only we could all be as positive and full of faith as he is. Geesh, I didn't know my old coat meant so much to him. I probably could have found a couple cans of beets or soup or something. Sure is a good kid, isn't he? Yeah, I think he gets that from me. Ha, dream on. He's far better than we ever were. Bet he doesn't mold his Christmas candle into a J on Christmas Eve. <laughs> no, but I could teach him. We could teach him a lot of things. The time for teaching is here. If you don't heed the warnings and bring the joy of Christmas back to your lives, the future will be affected. How do you know? Who are you, time-traveling Fraggle? I am the Fraggle of Christmas future. I can show you what will happen if you do not change your ways. No thanks. Is that necessary? It's not as bad as you may think. Over the years, the spirit of Christmas has survived many Scrooges, a couple of Grinches, and crazy Black Friday crowds. Somehow, the joys of Christmas live on in the hearts of those who believe. And Christ's love spreads to the remote corners of the world. So, I guess if you're not interested in how your attitudes affect the future. We change the future? What do you mean, our attitudes? It's easier to show you. Can you imagine? Seeing the future when you are as old as the Scrooges could feel a little bit odd. You are looking at future generations who have outlived you, yet were influenced by you just the same. What the Scrooge sisters saw was the puppet show a few Christmases later where Tiny Tim performed. Three kings of Oriental Bearing gifts we traverse afar Field and fountain, moor and mountain Following yonder star
Jesus, you're our perfect light. At the end of the performance, the aunties were sat there proud as can be. The puppet ministry had grown by leaps and bounds since they had last been to church. It was obvious the kids were having fun while highlighting important connections with their faith. Maybe the future Fraggle was wrong. There was enough Christmas spirit left. Their poor attitudes hadn't changed the future. That was wonderful. Tim did such a good job. I wonder if he was the camel or the drum. Maybe he was the star. I wonder if he was able to collect enough cans and clothes to help the needy this year. I hope so. What the sisters didn't realize was that Tiny Tim had lost a bit of his Christmas spirit. Oh, sure, he was there performing with puppets. His mother made him. The pastor noticed he didn't sign up for caroling at the nursing homes or try collecting food for the poor. He claimed he was too busy, said it was too time consuming, and questioned what kind of a difference it made anyway. Can we go home now? I'm ready to go. Honey, you did such a good job. I love those camels. Bah humbug. Now, son. What? That's not how we talk. What do you mean? That's how the aunts talk all the time. That's different, sweetheart. They are old and well grumpy. Well, then I can't wait till I'm old and grumpy because I, I have nothing to give. I can't make a difference anyway. So I say bah humbug to the whole season of giving. As you can imagine, the Scrooge sisters were speechless. Now, maybe you don't know them as well as I do, but speechless wasn't a normal state for either of them. Those two had an opinion about everything. They could talk to anyone about anything and leave them wishing they could escape. All their experiences and opinions came pouring out and they finished each other's effort sentences so effortlessly, the town joked that the sisters must have practiced their stories at home. Whenever someone pointed out the silver lining in their story, they would respond the same way. Humbug! Somehow, hearing their own words repeated by someone so young, so pure, so innocent, caused them to pause. Like the Grinch, whose heart grew three sizes that one day, they realized that Christmas isn't about the crowded shopping malls or the tangled, half-lit Christmas lights. Christmas was so much more.
It's not just about the manger where the baby lay. It's not all about the angels who sing for him that day. It's not all about the shepherds on the bright and shining star. It's not all about the wise men who traveled from afar. It's about the cross. It's about my sin. It's about how Jesus came to be born once so that we could be born again. It's about the storm that was rolled away so that you and I could have real life someday. It's about the cross. It's not just about the good things in this life I've done It's not all about the treasures Or the trophies that I've won It's not about the righteousness That I find within It's all about His precious blood That saved me from my sin It's about the cross It's about how Jesus came to be born once so that we could be born again. It's about the storm that was rolled away so that you and I could have real life someday. It's about the cross. The sisters Scrooge wasted no time in getting into their closets, sorting through things they hadn't worn in ages. They dug to the back of their pantry, found cans of beets, soup, corn, and beans. They piled everything into a box, adding a packet of chocolate pudding at the last minute. They raced to their nephew's home, greeting everyone they passed on the street. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Happy holidays! Nice to see your family made it! Look how everyone has grown. Oh, thank you. But we are headed to our nephews. 
Yes, we will have to get together soon. So nice to see you. Yes, yes. Feliz Navidad to you too. Season's greetings! Just saying that made it feel more real. Just acknowledging the season made their hearts lighter. Aunties, what is it? Why all the shouting? Merry Christmas! Look what we have for you. There is more. This is just what we could carry. You can come to the house and take whatever you need. We can go to the store and get more. Wow, this is wonderful. Are you sure? Yes, yes, take it. Dad, come see. What is it? What are you two up to? I can't just out doing some good for a change. We wanted to help with the food and clothing drive. We have more. This is just round one. That is really, that's so generous and unexpected. We are just so thankful for your generosity. Would you like to stay for dinner? Yes, yes thank, thank you. you. So, so nice to you to invite us. us. The room soon filled with the smells and sounds of a healthy family dinner, good food, great conversation, and plenty of laughter. Now, Tim, you know that God does not measure our worth by our wealth. That is right. It is the gift of ourself that we give that matters to him. You have given so much already in time and talent, not to mention getting your two grumpy aunts to remember the beauty of the season. You gave us more than we could ever give back. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I had forgotten that. From Luke, chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. As Jesus looked up, he saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. Truly, I tell you, he said, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these people gave their gifts out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. May this Christmas be one of cheerful giving, not just the presents under the tree, but the giving of your heart. A friendly greeting, a random act of kindness, and a needed hug cost nothing but mean so much. So too, the attitudes, energy, and opinions you share cost nothing but impact so many. When you feel you have nothing to give, remember the talents that God gave you and you share them freely. I guess then all I have to say is God bless us everyone.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming out tonight. That is our show. Let's give a big round of applause, see if we can get the uh, puppeteers to come out and introduce themselves. Copley and I've been in puppets for three years. My name's Karsten Holm. I've been in puppets for three years. Hi, my name's Nicole Ross and I've been in puppets for two years. I'm Aurelia Kruger and I've been in puppets for two years. I am Grayson Raybun and I am, this is my first year of puppets. I'm Bryce Spearson and this is my third year of puppets. This is something plus I've been in your puppets for one and a half. <laughs> I am Kat Holly and I've been in puppets for five years. I'm Gabe Van Hecke, and I've been in puppets for two years. I'm Madison Wurtzma, and I've been in puppets for four years. I'm Grace McCann, and I've been in puppets for two years. Hi, I'm Carly, and I don't know what we're saying. <laughs> How many years have you been in puppets? Oh, I've been in puppets for too many years. Three? <laughs> My name is Ainsley, and I've been in puppet for three years. <laughs> 